Welcome to part two of understanding program status using earned value management. In part one, we reviewed some concepts about the predictive model known as earned value management. We introduced the concept of planned value, the authorized budget assigned to the work, noted as the PV curve. We described the performance measurement baseline as a plot of the cumulative plan value over the entire duration of the program. We introduced the concept of actual costs, total costs actually incurred, noted as the AC curve, and the concept of earned value, the value of the work performed, noted as the EV curve. We compared the relationships between the three curves and learned how the curve varies, both cost and schedule. Using variance and some indexes, one can predict the estimated cost and duration of the program, the estimate at completion. Remember these values are on a two-dimensional curve. Each data point has a time and cost value. Now let's get a little deeper understanding of what this all means to the program leader and program sponsor. Before we examine some typical program scenarios or EVM patterns, we need to know what to expect. Assuming the program team estimated 100% of the work to be performed and the estimates are reasonable for the work performed, the performance measurement baseline should accurately model the duration and expected costs throughout the entire planned work effort. Having said this, we should expect the earned value curve and the actual cost curve to track and set directly on top of the performance measurement baseline or the planned value curve. This means that EV, earned value, and actual costs are equal to the plan value and show no or negligible variance. A program with this pattern would be expected to deliver on time and within the approved budget. In fact, the program may be delivered slightly less than budget if the program is delivered within the task estimates, since in this case the program would not require any management contingency funds. Now that we've set our expectations, let's look at some program scenarios. In our first scenario, scenario A, the earned value curve and the actual cost curve are below the planned value curve. A program showing a status of EV and actual cost curves below the planned value curve and the EV and actual cost curves equal communicates to the program sponsor there is no cost variance. However, there is schedule variance. The interpretation, the program is on budget and behind schedule. As a program sponsor, assuming the program continues to execute at the current course and speed, you would expect the program to be late and the spend to be approximately what it was allocated. A common program sponsor response is to fast track the program by performing more work in parallel or throw more resources at the program. It should be noted that fast tracking may negatively impact program quality or potentially create rework. Throwing more resources at the work effort will most likely increase program costs, so be, so be careful when considering or implementing any of these options. In our next scenario, Scenario B, a program showing a status of the earned value curve tracking on the planned value curve and the actual cost curve tracking above the planned value curve communicates there is no schedule variance, however the program has cost variance. The interpretation, the program is on schedule and over budget. As a program sponsor, assuming the program continues to execute at current course and speed, you would expect the program to be approximately on schedule and requiring additional funding to complete the current defined scope. If the program leader or program sponsor cannot fix these systemic issues, a common response is to reduce scope in order to meet the budgeted cost target and deliver the additional capability in a future release offering, etc. The good news is the program sponsor knows early and can plan downstream initiatives accordingly. Our next scenario, Scenario C, has the actual cost tracking on the planned value curve and the earned value curve below the planned value curve. A program showing a status of the actual cost tracking on the planned value curve and the earned value curve tracking below the planned value curve has a tendency to be misinterpreted. Some incorrectly interpret that if the actual cost 
is on the plan value curve, the program is on budget. The only time a program is on budget is if the actual cost curve is on the earned value curve. If the actual cost curve is not on the earned value curve, the program has cost variance. In this particular case, the program is over budget. In this scenario, the program sponsor needs to take a look at what is going on and ask a lot of questions and understand why the program is over budget. Were the estimates too aggressive? Does the program have the wrong skilled team doing the work? Were the estimates wrong? Are the program materials more expensive than planned? Are issues not getting resolved quickly causing the team to stall out and burn more hours than planned? The program team needs to do some root cause analysis to understand the issues quickly before program costs become unrecoverable. Our last scenario, scenario D, shows the earned value curve tracking above the planned value curve and the actual cost curve tracking on the planned value curve. A program showing the status of the earned value curve tracking above the planned value curve and the actual cost curve tracking on the planned value curve is the program sponsor's dream program status chart. Earned value tracking above the planned value curve communicates the program is ahead of schedule. The actual cost curve tracking on the planned value curve and below the earned value curve communicates the program is under budget, ahead of schedule, and below budget. This is the ultimate and most desired program status. The program team should be rewarded for delivering this program performance. In summary, we see that using the earned value curve to describe program status can help the program sponsor understand the status and what actions need to be taken. For example, when the initiative will be completed. Again, this is an estimate based on current performance of the program. If additional funding or resources are required to complete the initiative. What questions need to be asked to help fix systemic and or pervasive program execution issues. And if the program plans need to be in, set in place for downstream and dependent follow-on programs that require the in-flight program as a prerequisite. This allows the organization to be proactive versus reactive and not look dull. We hope you found this information useful. If your organization is not currently using some of these techniques to report program status and would like to, please do not hesitate to contact us using the contact information on this slide. Hendon Group wishes you and your organization great success now and in the future.